What's the herbs? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Journal. Journal is a title from Locked Door Puzzle, perhaps most notable for their game Cairo, which was a very artistic sort of exploration kind of title. I quite enjoyed that one. Uh, before we get into Journal, I'm going to take a look at the options menu. Uh, we have full screen and resolution options, which are good, I like those, but we've got voice acting and music in the game, but they're both tied to the same volume slider, which is not great. Controls uh, are supposed to be rebindable, but last time I tried rebinding them, it threw up a sort of text box that you couldn't do anything with and it broke the game and because I couldn't get out of that screen. The only way to fix that was just to close the window and relaunch the game, frankly. It's supposed to have gamepad support, but it seems to be limited. I've, I've tried using it and sometimes the inputs just don't respond. I'm not sure what's going on there. It doesn't seem to work. But it's a pretty simple game. The most controls you're going to be using is arrow keys to move and spacebar to interact with stuff. Uh, in fact, you do in fact have a jump key by pressing up, but I've never found anything. In fact, I played through the entire game, though I found nothing in the game that you needed to jump over in the slightest. Left, right, and space are literally the only keys you're actually ever going to need in this game. So, you know. Uh, if you like using the gamepad, by all means try to use it, but I would recommend just sticking with a keyboard for this one. So, let's head on out and try a new game. So I'm going to skip through this intro. I've kept a journal for as long as I can remember. And obviously the core theme of this game is going to be keeping the journal. We've got this 3D world which simply serves as kind of a backdrop. The actual gameplay takes place, as you see here, within the pages of the journal. The art style of the game is this kind of very hand-drawn kind of thing going on. And here on the table is the journal within the game. And the premise is that She's been keeping a journal, but all the pages are blank, so now we need to go and explore the mystery of why the journal is blank. So yes, we can walk left, right, and we can jump, but there is no need to jump. Uh, the down key was sort of part of the keys, but down actually has no purpose, and I'm not sure why you would ever want to do that. So, there you go. Uh, so, got all the characters in this are completely faceless, and... I'm sure there's a deliberate choice behind doing that, but for me, I just find that a little bit creepy. I don't know why they should all be completely and totally faceless. It's just a little weird. Honestly, the art style, I'm not personally totally sold on. I'm not a big fan of this. It's... It's just, it's just a little weird for me. Um, it's not my favourite thing in the world, what can I say? So let's have a chat to like our there's mother. something up with my mother lately. She always means well, but something's off. It's just a feeling. So all these chunks that get read out, these these text bits that our voice actor reads, these bits go into our journal, so we can read them back later. And then most of the conversations won't actually end up in the journal. So we're going to chat to mum, and we can ask her about the journal. What happens to the journal? Do you mean you can't find it? No, the pages are blank. I haven't touched it. Somebody's been snooping. They don't go blank on their own. I don't know what to say. I'm sure you didn't do anything? And so on and so forth. So let's talk to her about Eleanor, who is our, our protagonist's best friend. Have you seen Eleanor recently? Are you supposed to be seeing her today? No, nothing's wrong. I forgot I was supposed to go see her. Let's, uh, let's be nice about her. I don't know why. We get along well enough. She's just shy. I'll help. Uh, that's my girl. You're a good friend, sweetie. Thanks, Sometimes Mom. I worry about Eleanor being too shy. It makes things difficult, especially at school. But she's still my friend. I do think the voice acting is, in, uh, good, is quite good in this. There are, as it happens, two voice actors. Mo the first one is obviously our protagonist here. We're going to, every time she, we've got some internal monologue sections like that, it's going to be read out by a female voice actor. And then at the end of each day within the game, there's a section read out by a male voice actor. And I'm not convinced he's quite as high quality as the woman doing it. His his dialogue just seems to fall a little flat compared to the one. I've known Eleanor since we moved to the area. She was my first friend round here, and I think I was probably hers, too. We had each other, and that's never changed. But even once I started to make other friends, she didn't. So let's chat to Eleanor. Something happened. I'm sorry I got caught up in other things. I didn't have any other plans. So, 
Oh, I'm sorry, I kept you waiting. It's all right, I didn't have anything else to do. So we get a few different dialogue choices. For the most part, these aren't really going to affect the course of things. You get a, you get slightly different dialogue depending on what you pick. So I can be indifferent about it a second. So eh, who cares that I was late? I can apologize. I'll be nice. I'll apologize. How late am I? I can't remember what time. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm really late. It's only an hour. An hour? That's terrible. You're a terrible timekeeper, kid. What have you been up to? Nothing. Just homework. Oh, it's better than getting into trouble. I don't mind. Most of it's interesting. Even history. We don't like history. So we shall ask her about our journal, because that is what we're here to do. I want to find out why the pages are blank. Something weird happened to my journal. I didn't know you had a journal. Best friends forever, and she didn't know we had a journal. Terrible. I've seen it every day. Something's happened to it. I've lost everything. You misplaced it. No, the pages are blank. It's really weird. Who do you think did it? I don't know. My mom knows where the journal is, but I don't know why she'd mess with it. I tell her not to touch it. She did, I guess there must have been some reason for it. What reason could she have? My journal's private. It couldn't, wouldn't even mean anything to anyone else. Don't ask me, but if she, but who else could have done something to it if not you? I thought if we put our heads together, we might come up with something. Who else knew you had a journal? Only a couple of people. My mother, John. John the park keeper? Yeah, I told him about it before, but I don't think it's him. He hasn't visited us for a while. That doesn't leave many options. Nope. Thanks, I'll think about Eleanor it. Eleanor and I tried to work out what might have happened to my journal. She's good at setting things out logically. Even if we didn't get anywhere. So I shall ask her about her. So most of this game is literally just going to be talking to people, wandering back and forth. We're going to go through a bunch of different hand-drawn environments. And we're going to talk to a whole bunch of different people. And we're going to try and figure things out. On each day there's going to be different dramatic events are going to unfold. And we need to work our way through them. And as we've seen as far as the journal goes, there's going to be some strange things that don't quite add up as we go along. In fact, if we talk to Elna, uh, the mystery will deepen. I don't want to get shouted at anymore. Why would you be shouted at? One of the windows at school got broken. I saw it. They put a board over it now. Someone's been spreading rumours about it, about me. What kind of rumours? They're saying I broke the window. I'll be curious. Do you know what happened? How would I? I didn't do it. it doesn't seem like the kind of thing you'd do. I would never. I'm glad you don't believe me. I don't know why my parents don't. How did your parents find out? I think the park keeper told them. Why would he do that? I guess he heard the rumours too. Have you told him you didn't do it? I probably we were, I probably should, but what if he shouts at me too? He wouldn't do that. John's a nice guy. If you say so, he's probably mad at me. I could talk to him for you if you want. Would you? Yeah, of course. Ellen so then we can go talk to John as well. Because of that she broke a window at school. She says she didn't do it, but John yeah. already told her parents that it was her. Well, I'm going to head off. So yeah, the dialogue does kind of carry on even if you sort of head on away from the characters. We'll go to the park and there's John leaning and loitering like he always does. John's a friend of the family, but he hasn't been around much lately. He works nearby, but there was a time he visited my parents and me often. So let's chat to him about the broken window. So we can also chat to him about the journal, see if he knows anything. So what's up? My journal, something's happened. In the notebook you're always guarding with your life. It's important to me. Did you lose it? Now the pages are blank. Well, that was careless. I kept the book, notebook, but lost the words inside it. It's not funny. Can you take something seriously for a minute? Sorry, just trying to make you laugh. I don't feel like laughing about it. How could I lose all the things I wrote? I don't know how that could have happened. I guess it was a waste of time asking. So, we shall... There's, a, there's bits of dialogue. She will talk to the characters about her mother, in spite of the fact that you can actually skip the mother dialogue at the start, because that's obviously an optional thing you can interact with, you can walk straight past the mother and then st still talk to other characters about her, which is a little bit odd. It's strange that she'd come up in the conversation and say, oh, my mum's acted weird this morning, um, but you haven't talked to her, so that doesn't quite add up. Uh, but hey-ho. Uh, that's not the point. Thanks anyway, I'll ask someone else. Let's talk to him about the window. Do your father falling out? She says that someone broke the windows. I hope she's alright. It's not pleasant feeling like someone's disappointed. She should be protective. But she says she didn't do it. She told you that? Yes, she thinks someone's spreading rumours. I thought you knew she'd done it. How would I know? You're the one who told me. I told you? Why would I tell you she'd done it? I thought you said you'd seen her do it. I don't remember saying that. Well, did you see her do it or not? If you think, she might, if you, think you might be wrong, you'd better say now. I'm not sure. So you ought, perhaps you ought to have a careful think about it. You don't want Eleanor, Eleanor to be in trouble for no reason, do you? No, of course not. So we shall leave. So, apparently I'm the one spreading rumours about her, but I don't remember. So this is the kind of thing that's going to come up. There's going to be lots of strange events that kind of don't quite add up entirely as we go along. So if we chat to Eleanor, we can tell him what John's told us. 
I spoke to John. Is he mad at me too? No, but... Am I in even more trouble? Is he going to tell the school? He's just concerned. I didn't do it. Why does he think it was me? Uh, I'll come out with it. Somebody else told him you did it. Who would do that? Well, he says, I told him. What? Why? Why did you tell him it was me? I don't remember. Maybe I did. You did it, didn't you? You broke that window and blamed it on me. I thought you were my friend. And then we've got this slightly different decision system, which, again, I've tried going through them with different options, and it doesn't genuinely seem to make much difference to the course of things. Whether you deny it or admit it, uh, it still blows up and you fall out with your friends, and the end of chapter scene, for there is an end of chapter scene, uh, plays out exactly the same way. And the only thing these little bit slips of paper kind of decision seems to serve to do is to point out that yes this is one of the important scenes this is kind of what you're looking for at the end of at the end of the, any given chapter so uh yes let's admit it uh so what it's not a big deal it'll get repaired but i got into trouble for something you did i didn't know your parents would freak out john asked me about the window i didn't want him to think i did it i wasn't eleanor thinking. overreacted about me telling john she'd broken the window it's not as bad as she thinks it is, but she's really upset. I can't believe you've done this to me. And then we've got three more choices, and again, I've tried them, they don't seem to make too much difference. We'll be apologetic. I'm sorry I really am, but I wasn't going to take the blame. We didn't leave talk things well after speaking about the window. Eleanor didn't want to talk about it anymore, and in a way I was glad. So we've got those pages sort of fly across the middle of the screen there to sort of say... Yep, pages have been restored to the journal, you've filled in a day's worth of pages. So head up here, and if we look at the journal, this is actually end of chapter, and we'll go through to another scene within the 3D world, which, if I take a moment to um, discuss that, you can see around the edges of the journal, we've got uh, what an actual 3D model world, we've got a pencil there, a cup on the table, and the journal itself, and... To go back to the options menu, if we may, I can't help but feel that this game might just have benefited from an anti-aliasing function, just to smooth those edges, because there's a lot of very jagged stuff in there, and, you know, just something just to tidy it up might have made this outside world look a little bit less rough than it is. So, whilst most of the gameplay is obviously this 2D hand-drawn stuff within the journal, the actual 3D world it's set within perhaps could have used a bit more of a clean-up. So, let us go see this scene. This is going to have the other voice actor I was talking about, the one that I don't think is quite as good. And, like I say, I've been through a few different options, I've tried to find out if this scene changes, and as far as I can tell, it just doesn't. So, the, the options you pick don't seem to make much bearing on the story. It's... The narrative, no matter your options, is going to play out the same, and it's a very interesting narrative. It's like I say, I'm not a fan of the, I'm not a fan of the art style, but certainly the story was very compelling, and um, you know, I, I felt the need to play through to the end just to see what happened. The girl and the roller coaster. Once there was a great travelling carnival, renowned for its splendour across all the land. Where they travelled, they brought with them the strangest and most wonderful sights. The Big Top held some of the most talented circus performers who had ever lived. For the thrill seekers, of course, so much of this magic was just the backdrop for the rides. It was the rides that the girl cared about above all else. Each year she returned, the ride seemed even more exciting. No more so than the year she was finally tall enough to ride the roller coaster. In her mind, she had built it up to something almost unreal, yet wonderfully it did not disappoint. As she got older, life got more complicated, until one year she was so wrapped up in life that she decided not to go. It was months before she realised how a part of her felt empty at having missed it, a sense of loss she couldn't explain. However, the carnival never returned. Her mother told her perhaps it closed down. Carnivals were no longer so impressive in this day and age. For some reason, she blamed herself, as if somehow it was her fault they were gone. It had been so important to her. Why had she let it go? So we're going to get bits of chunks of story about this carnival. The carnival itself is, it would turn out later on in the story, intrinsically tied to the story of Journal, but I obviously can't elaborate on that because spoilers and all that. Uh, at the same time, all the bits of the, the carnival story almost feel like 
perhaps metaphors for what's actually going on within the story itself. And that's quite interestingly done. Like I said, the narrative itself is well written. It's the soundtrack here. Yeah, we've got a sort of orchestral score by Kevin McLeod, whose work you may be familiar with from such channels as my own, because he's got he's quite well noted in people who want free music, because he's got a big, a big widely available free music library that lots of people on YouTube and other creative works tend to rely on, including myself. So he, he's a very talented artist, and he's put together a great score for this game as well. So, uh, like I say, I'm not a fan of the art style, but the music is fantastic, and the narrative the narrative is a very, very compelling story, and it's, it's very, very well written, and I think it's worth checking out just for that alone. The game isn't without its issues, but it's, it's definitely a very intriguing title, and whilst this is, this is one of those titles that has been labelled on Steam as a walking simulator, and I can see where they're coming from, it's, there is mostly walking involved in this, and... Obviously that's not going to appeal to a great many people. A lot of people don't like this kind of title, sort of artsy-fartsy walking simulator kind of title. But for myself, I do enjoy a good narrative and this is really where this game absolutely shines. So if you're in, in looking for a very interesting and deep story, this is a good one to check out. So this has been a journal. It's available on Steam now for £6.99 or your regional equivalent. Also, through their site, they have it for $10 on the Humble widget, but I can't actually see it on the Humble store itself. So, uh, that might work out slightly cheaper, depending on currency conversions. I'm not sure what the actual rates are at the moment. Although, the Humble widget also does not explicitly say that you get a Steam key with it, so if that's a deal breaker, you might not want to get it through that. A lot of people are, you know, fairly insistent on getting a Steam key these days. So, there is that. But yep, this has been Journal by Locked Door Puzzle. I have been Maroka, and I shall see you next time.